Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this episode I want to cover something that's very critical when you're shooting real estate photography. It applies to other genres as well, other genres of photography, but it's something that's often overlooked. So often we concentrate on the technical side. How do we do flambient or if you're doing HDR? How do you do window pulls? All the various editing processes that go with it. What camera should I buy? What lens should I be using? All that stuff is very important but there is one rule that supersedes everything. It's something that I refer to as the two minute rule for real estate photography. And once again, it applies to just about any genre, but differently. For instance, if you're shooting portraits, you know you go out on a portrait session, you have a time limit. But those are different expectations than when you're shooting real estate. If you're shooting for a commercial job, if you're shooting for um, something that is paid by the hour, then time limits don't necessarily matter. But when you're shooting most real estate, it's going to be for listings. And so you have to keep your time limit down to about two minutes per photo on average. Now, if you've ever shot weddings, you know, as one of my good old friends used to say who used to shoot weddings, that shooting a wedding is like shooting a riot. And there's not much difference there. Um, he used to work in the media also, so he had covered riots in the past. And he compared the two. And it's very similar when you get into shooting real estate because you walk in the door and there's some real estate agent who's on their phone toe tapping and can't wait for you to get out, but more so you won't be profitable if you start exceeding a certain limit. Now, the two minute rule is a goal. It's not a hard, fast rule. Every photo won't be applied to that. So I want to talk through a little bit of this rule so you can understand it better and then how to practice it, how to apply it, and how to prepare for it. So the basic rule is you try to get to two minutes per photo. If you're doing the standard kind of real estate package for a lot of homes, uh, 2,000 square feet or under, that are going to be 25 photos, that means that if you take about two minutes per photo, it's going to be 50 minutes set up and tear down. Along with that means it's going to be about an hour shoot. Now, not everything will take as long to shoot outside goes very quick most of the time. It should anyways. Um, you shouldn't also spend a lot of time on things like laundry rooms and teenagers' bedrooms that are a mess. So there's things where you can take shortcuts, but you have to be able to time yourself to get that down. So let's take a look at something going just a little bit longer. Let's say that you're at about three minutes. Well, that's not bad. That's an hour and 15 minutes, 75 minutes, but you have to add setup and tear down to that. If also you're arriving for a 35 shot package, it's a bigger house, you might be talking to the realtor a little bit longer. You have to factor in that time as well. You can see this is starting to affect your pricing. Now, if you're first starting out and you're doing, let's say, flambient blending, you're not sure about your lighting, you haven't practiced it a lot yet, haven't had a lot of experience yet with it, then it's going to take a long time. And it will. It just will. I mean, don't, don't uh, condemn yourself for doing that. Don't, don't sell yourself short. If you're at four minutes though for a photo and you're doing just a 25 shot simple shot package, set up and tear down, you're getting close to about a two hour time frame for this particular shoot. That's going to be unacceptable to realtors. Now, if they leave the house empty for you and you have all the time in the world, then you don't have to worry about that. But if you do want to be profitable, then you need to start winnowing that down. And there's a lot of things you can do to start narrowing down that time and all also concentrate on the shots that will mean the most. So one thing to try, no matter what, is get your exteriors down so that you can take a good amount of exteriors from the various angles that realtors will want, but you can go through them very quickly. You're not spending a lot of time outside. Now, this is where you know your exposure settings, you know the angles that you're looking for. A couple resources, of course, that I have on that are in my real estate photography series. Take a look at the exteriors ebook. Take a look at shot lists. That will help you out in that regard. And by the way, I have links to everything in my real estate photography series. You can look that up in the description for this video. But that's an important thing because if you're up against also, let's say it's just a 25 shot shoot, but you come across, it's like, wow, look at this. We've got an amazing pool in the backyard. We've got a jacuzzi. We've got this extra land we didn't know about. There's an outbuilding. That's something else. I'm going to get to that in just a second. But for the most part, standard tracked homes, you know, that you're looking at, then you can get 
those basic angles down inside, that's the hard part, right? That's where you start doing lighting and trying to get everything just right. If you're starting to futz with some of the stuff around the house to get the right shot, we gotta talk about that a little bit more. But if everything is ready to go, then think about this. The laundry room, yes, they do want to show it, but nobody's going to really care if you just used a flash or took an ambient shot of the laundry room. Or like I've talked about in like the interiors book, you do the one stop rule. You know where the ambient shot's going to be, go up about one stop, add some flash, boom, you got a little bit of a mix of then flash and ambient. Perfect mix, good enough, shows that laundry room. If you're in a house that has teenagers, then their rooms are gonna have posters on the walls, are gonna be messy. Just get a quick shot in there. Try to make it look as best you can, but don't spend a lot of time. So a quick shortcut for that is remember that most cameras nowadays, most digital cameras are ISO invariant. Got a link to uh, that particular video also down in the description for the video. And if you might recall from that video, is that you can go up to extremely high ISOs and you can also underexpose or overexpose quite a bit. If you're using RAW, these ISO invariant or near ISO invariant cameras that you're shooting with nowadays, or probably are, you're not going to see noise, grain, all those things are there. So you can tweak a lot later. Don't worry about trying to get everything perfect for your flash or ambient window pulls, all that type of stuff when you're shooting those kids' room. That will knock out a lot of time. So if you're doing a single story house, one of the things I like to do is to just knock out those bedrooms and bathrooms first. Kind of then know how much time I can spend for the rest of the house. Now this is where then things get a little trickier because you need to put your emphasis on the selling features of the house. So that's going to be kitchens and the primary bedroom, they used to call it master bedroom, but the primary bedroom, primary bathroom, those things have more importance than just the kids room, hall, bath, laundry room, and then of course kitchens. You want to make sure that you do put your time and effort into that. So those are areas and things to consider while you're going through a shoot and trying to achieve that two minute rule for real estate photography. But being on site is just part of the battle. As you know, you gotta take everything home and you gotta edit it. So there is, yes, you can outsource it and you can pay for outsourcing. And if you wanna lose money doing that, that's fine. And I know some of you are gonna say, oh, I've just the best thing I ever did because I can outsource my stuff. And you know I have videos on that where I talk against that because of the fact that you won't really shoot to the best of your ability to know how you can then winnow down that time, which you can. You should have this goal, and if you can meet this goal, there's no reason, I'm gonna show you here in a second, there's no reason why you should outsource or even think about it. So, one of the things you wanna make sure is that for every hour of shooting, it's one hour editing at most. That's everything. So that comes down to then some profitability. So thinking about the outsourcing thing, and the reason why I don't, is you can think about this. If you're down to the two minute rule, that means that if you're shooting local, now adding mileage, that's another thing where you need to add on extra cost for that because you would lose money, but shooting local, let's say that you've got three gigs, and those three gigs are your standard tracked home. It's gonna take you about an hour to go through. Well, if that's three hours of your time plus one hour traveling around to all of them, and if each of those three jobs took then one hour of editing, you have three hours of shooting, you've got three hours of editing, and then you have one hour of traveling around. That's seven hours. It still leaves you an hour for buffer time, breaks, things like that. Now, if you were to charge $200 for each one of those houses, that's $600 a day. If you did that five days a week, then you got $3,000 a week. So that's not bad. If you did that 40 weeks out of the year during the prime season, you get $120,000 a year for doing just those three homes. Now, that's without then having to outsource anything for your editing. So this is why the two minute rule starts becoming very important. Now, right off the bat, I know somebody's going to say, well, I'm in Indiana, I'm in Nevada, I'm in wherever, you're only going to be able to charge $100 for a shoot. I've talked about this before, I've got videos on pricing, and like I've mentioned before, yes, I'm in California, $200 would be a bargain out here for a shoot like that. So when I'm down in Santa Monica, Palisades, things like that, those, those shoots, sometimes they start at $450 just for a standard shoot. Now, some of that includes mileage also, but 
but don't think that California, oh, we can charge $200 for a shoot. You might be surprised what you can when you're worth it. When you raise your quality enough, yes, you can be uh, definitely worth more. So there comes this balance of, well, I don't wanna take much time, I wouldn't make any profit, but then I'm not good enough to charge enough to really make the money. Now comes your investment in yourself, your investment in time. So that's why the two minute rule is something to strive for. You don't wanna just cut corners and not be good and make your photos worse. You wanna be able to, in a very short time, make super impactful photos. And that takes practice, practice, practice. So like I've said time and time again throughout my videos is use your home no matter where you live. Don't worry about cleaning it up necessarily. Practice the techniques, practice the techniques, and practice how long it takes you. So when I was in the military many, many, many years ago, Ohio National Guard, by the way, back in the 1980s, so for those wondering. But anyways, in basic training, one of the requirements we had was you had to disassemble and assemble an M16 within a certain amount of time to be able to pass basic training. Now, whatever reasons they had for it, yeah, whatever. But the fact is, is when you're under the gun, literally, you have to be able to know how how long something's going to take. You have to be able to work under pressure. And like my friend said before, you have to shoot like it's a riot and you have to be able to though, keep your cool and then know you can work this down. Now, there are caveats to this though that we have to be aware of. You might show up to some place and they might not be ready. There might be higher expectations. Two different things here, but they both relate to the same thing. First and foremost, you should be sending a checklist prior to any shoot. Grab mine off my website if you want. You're free, use it, repurpose it however you want. If you know in my business techniques book, I include it there and I also encourage everybody take it, use that because that will tell your client right off the bat, look, these are my expectations when I show up in a very nice professional way so that they know you show up, things aren't ready. Now comes step number two, you can negotiate a higher price. If you have the time available to you, then you can say, well, this is going to take longer. So I'd have to charge da, 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 da. And you charge by the hour. Remember using that two minute rule. Also some of the, of your market due diligence, you'd be establishing some of your price, something also in the business techniques book. The other is to know what you're going to shoot. You don't want to just shoot everything. And that's where my book shot lists come in. And I know throughout this video, I've gotten dislikes because I promoted my books, but I wrote these for a reason. And shot lists is very important for that. Without shot lists for myself, I wouldn't have been able to know how to get in and out, shoot exactly what the clients wanted for the various packages that I was offering. So anyways, links to all that stuff down in the description for this video. But most importantly, practice, practice, practice. Try to get, if you're going to shoot an hour shoot, then you need to make sure that you can practice and get that down to an hour. You don't have enough to shoot at home to do that. Try some difficult stuff and work toward that two minute rule. No matter what it is though, that you finally get down to, whether it's 10 minutes, eight minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, whatever it is, you want to see progression and progression is the key to everything that we do. No matter if it's working out, exercising, dieting, whether it's in our field here, photography, you want to improve on something, you want to get better at anything. You may never achieve the goals that you set for yourself, but every step along the way, if you're progressing, you're doing better and that is success. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.